Now more than ever, innovative technologies are fueling change and sparking new ways of thinking. Collaboration between corporations and startups is key to staying at the forefront of these trends. However, finding the right startups can be expensive, time-consuming, and ineffective. But Plug and Play is here to help. As a corporate partner, you will gain access to a whole ecosystem of innovation. Discover startups that meet your tech interests. Stay updated on the latest trends and network with industry peers. We will help you during every stage of your innovation journey, no matter where you are and where you want to go. Get in touch today. Hey folks, and welcome to the PNC Trends Parametric Insurance for Catastrophe event put on by Plug and Play, the Insure Tech Vertical here at Plug and Play. If we could go to the next slide, that'd be great. My name is Sean. I will be emceeing here today. We have a brief agenda in front of you. So just some welcoming remarks here in the first few minutes, and then a trends presentation by the ventures team here at plug and play and then afterwards we will have three startups pitching to you um there will be a two to three minute q a also for that so just be prepared there's some dialogue if you want to ask questions there'll be an opportunity for that too and without further ado i will pass it off to my colleagues andres and francesco andres francesco thank you for being with us today um yeah, I guess I'll just hand it over to you now. Hello, everyone, and thank you for, for joining us today. As you already know, uh, today we will be talking about the interesting topic of uh, parametric insurance, specifically applied to catastrophe. And since time is of the essence today, we will be going fairly fast over the slides and skipping some of the information and details on them. Um, however, if anyone wants to further discuss the topic or would like to get access to the deck, just reach out to us and we will be more than happy to share our thoughts and insights and also the content. So with that being said, I think it's just fair to introduce ourselves. So first of all, welcome. And uh, nice to meet you all. My name is Andres Diaz Martinez, working for the Plug and Play Ventures team as an associate, focusing on InsureTech Vertical, specifically for property and casualty. Hence, why actually, like, I love nerding about this topic. So, um, I have been already at Plug and Play for nearly two years, and I am happy to help anyone as much as I can. So, again, feel free to to reach out. And now, over to my colleague Francisco. So hi, hi everyone, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, really, really happy to be here. My name is Francesco Carmichano. I've been I've been working here at Plug and Play for four months now. And as Andres, I'm I'm focusing on property and casualty product lines within the InsureTech uh, vertical. And again, I'm really really excited to to be here and discuss about this super interesting topic. Awesome. So just a quick revision of today's agenda. We wanted this presentation to be valuable for everyone in the call. Therefore, we will quickly review the overall state of the market to understand where parametric and catastrophe stands. And we wanted to propose different options in case you're thinking about starting to offer these products, starting with maybe white label solutions to then moving on to developing your own uh, in-house. And now back to you, Francesco. So awesome. So yeah, as Andres mentioned, today we are discussing one of the most interesting and relevant trends in InsurTech. This trend has attracted interest and investment over the last few years, and it still attracts them. This trend that I'm talking about, obviously, is parametric insurance, which is an insurance product that relies on data rather than subjective uh, claim assessment to pay damages. One of the key benefits here, uh, one of the key benefits of this solution is the potential to adapt to adverse weather uh, products which could lead to further efficiency, affordability, and adoption of these products, products which are essential for a wide array of industries within our economy, for example, farming uh, or energy, and they are essential as well for the society as a whole. With that being said, I think it is fair to take a, uh, take a step back and see where the whole insurance space is right now. 
as you may know, uh, 2022 was kind of a difficult year for both uh, the public and private insure tech markets. Throughout 2022, we have seen different insure techs going public through IPOs or SPACs, and we have seen then their stocks plummet, uh, with some of them dropping by over 80% in 2022. This negative sentiment uh, that was driven by macroeconomic and geopolitically uh, and geopolitical uncertainty spilled then into private markets with insure tech funding dropping by over 50% on a year-over-year -year basis. Still, as we said, it is true that funding and deals drop, but with $8.4 billion in total funding, 2022 still represents the third best year on track for the insure tech space after 2021 and 2020. What does this mean? Uh, this means that as a whole, the insure tech space still attracts a lot of interest and investments from uh, a wide variety of investors, ranging from VC or corporate VC, also strategic investor to, uh, to private equity. So now, what can we say about the future for the insure, te for the insure tech space? Uh, well, we see, we see different trends escalating and attracting both interest and investment in 2023 and also for the following years. Uh, some of these trends that we are excited about are, for example, the change in customer behavior and global trends that are driving the growth in new product lines, such as, for example, think about cyber insurance or paid insurance. Then we have uh, a, another, another really interesting trend is the continued uh, digitization and distribution, which is required in order to enhance customer experience and increase efficiency in distribution related product, in, in, in distribution related processes. Also, for example, we are seeing evolving data analytics capabilities, a really interesting trend here related with the latest development in technologies such as AI and machine learning, and related with the growing availability of data at a reasonable cost for uh, different sources. Think, about, think for example, about, uh, about automotive data. Another, another interesting trend uh, is the focus on core platforms with specific focus on cloud and no-code technologies. These platforms that are increasingly uh, popular uh, and are increasingly deployed to improve optimization of, oper of operations. And last but not least, it is important to note uh, that there is a growing interest, interest in two key trends related with what we are going to discuss today. Uh, on the one hand, we have continued interest in automated claims with arising solutions such as, for example, of course, parametric insurance. And here we have seen a wide array of really interesting startups and solutions uh, for different, also for different product lines, not only not only catastrophes, and I'm talking, for example, about uh, raincoat or outside of catastrophes, for example, startups like OTT risk. While on the other hand, the growth in natural disaster, which represents actually a major risk for the insurance industry, have led into growing interest into startups that are disrupting this space by providing by, by providing data analytics capabilities for risk and mitigation. Some of the really interesting solutions that we are seeing. To, uh, nowadays are, for example, start, uh, the solutions are provided by startups such as, for example, Floodbase, Forever 20, and Futureproof. As a matter of fact, uh, both of these trends that we discussed, natural catastrophes and parametric, uh, and parametric insurance, even amid uh, market turmoil and uncertainty and a dropping funding level in the private markets, they still manage to attract corporate interest and VC investment. Actually, according to Instec London, just in, 22, in, in 2022, um, companies specialized in parametric insurance have raised more than $300 million, which if you think about it, is pretty, it's pretty crazy because it is more than the funding in all previous years since 2013 combined. Some of the notable deals that we have seen and were close in, in 2022 related to this space include, for example, ISI, that raised nearly $140 million during a Series D round. They are Finnish startup that allow insurance companies and also governments to gain access to SIR data and imagery in real time for different purposes, such as, for example, claims processing or obviously parametric insurance. Another really interesting startup is Descartes and the Writing, uh, based out of France, which managed to raise uh, $120 million during a Series B round. They are basically a parametric insurance MGA that offers uh, NATCAP related products. And also, if, you, if, we, if we go into 2023, fast forward into 2023, what we are seeing is that the space is still attracting interest and investment. And during the first quarter, quarter of this year, what we have seen is other notable deals, such as, for example, Floodbase, that provides data solutions for parametric flood insurance. 
that they raised, they managed to raise a $12 million Series A round. Then we have also, for example, Rethought Insurance, uh, Flood Insurance Specialized MGA, which raised a $10.5 million Series A round. And then the, the Swiss startup, Circia, that raised uh, nearly a million and a half uh, dollars uh, during a seed round. All in all, uh, we have seen that this space is still attracting both interest and investment. Um, as we have seen, uh, there is a growing risk, as discussed, uh, there is a growing risk of natural disasters, which, which, have, uh, which will have to be addressed by insurance companies and the growing need to automate also an increase operational efficiency in claims management. These two factors are leading to a growing level of investment in startups that are providing those solutions and that actually enable insurance companies uh, to better understand and mitigate certain risks, if you think, for example, about flood or hurricanes. And on the other side, they enable insurance companies to manage and automate uh, claims. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you for that overview, Francisco. So when it comes to actually like to wanting to offer products in parametric for a catastrophe, white label solutions can be a great option. And here we've actually compiled three startups that we believe are doing a great job at it. First, um, first off, of course, like we wanted to highlight one of the main players out there at the moment, Descartes. Um, they offer a platform that allows the creation of catastrophe energy and agriculture products, amongst others, as Francesco previously mentioned. They are based out of France and have already raised a good amount of funding. And their advantage is their capacity to handle big data, integrate multiple sources, formats, and apply cutting edge statistical techniques. Um, enabling them to decide uh, to design the optimal insurance cover. Next up, um, we actually wanted to cover global parametrics. In this case, a US-based startup selected as one of the top future 50, um, one of the most innovative insurtechs out there. They focus on helping financial institutions manage their climate risk, risk exposure. They mainly focus on earthquakes and climate catastrophes, and the solution can be compared to day cards. However, um, they are more oriented towards financial institutions, as previously mentioned. And then lastly, we wanted to highlight also Raincoat, who will join us later uh, during the startup pitches, so I don't want to spoil anything. However, um, I do have to say that they have developed a really interesting solution. Um, based out of Puerto Rico, with international coverage, uh, Raincoat has truly developed a modular solution that can be easily integrated and embedded into any system to be able to start offering parametric insurance. Um, I won't spoil anything else and let them explain it better themselves. So back to you, Francisco. Awesome, awesome. Uh, with this being said, uh, let's deep dive into the parametric insurance infrastructure in what what it looks like to build a parametric insurance infrastructure and what are the trends within this space. So uh, in order to build a parametric insurance infrastructure, there are different things to take into account. And specifically today, we are discussing about three main items. The first item is the fact that it is required to develop a data infrastructure. It is required to gain access to relevant data, for example, to build indexes to trigger parametric insurance. And it is required to have the proper tools uh, to process and analyze that data. Second item, it is required to have the, the accurate underwriting tools, of course. And last but not least, the third item, it is required to automate claims management process, processes. So it is important to consider both specific uh, process, process automation solutions and claims, claims management solutions. And as you can see, uh, if, you look, if you take a look at, at the market map, there are several startups providing solutions in uh, related to the items that we uh, discussed. So uh, speaking of uh, data infrastructure, we are going to see what are the top trends involved in it. A key trend here, the first key trend here is catastrophe modeling uh, with catastrophe losses rising both in severity and frequency. Insurance companies will have to develop strong catastrophe, catastrophe modeling capabilities in order to understand future, risk, future risks. Another key trend here is the growing use of geospatial analytics that is used to underwrite and virtually assess claims for property insurance in parametric offerings. And here uh, we have different startups offering really interesting solutions. Some of them, for example, were mentioned earlier um, when, when we talked about the deals, for example, Zesty AI and iSight. Moving forward, uh, our last key trend here is that we observe um, the use of 
uh, the growing use of hyperlocal weather analytics, that is uh, essentially the fact that both models and data are getting more and more accurate and uh, granular, which allows, we, that is a fact that allows insurance companies to develop further their underwriting, both their underwriting and their claim handling tools. In order to understand potential, potential losses, and in order to better underwrite the risk, actually the first thing uh, is to have the, the accurate uh, catastrophe modeling tools and technologies. And sorry, Andres, okay, perfect, cool. And we have seen different use cases in the market. One, one of the most interesting use cases uh, is the partnership between a French multinational insurance company, uh, AXA, and RMS, which is a catastrophe risk modeling platform that got acquired by, by Moody's. Obviously, we are aware that RMS is not a startup anymore, but we believe this is a really interesting use case uh, of a company like AXA leveraging technology to innovate within a product line. In this case, we are, we are talking about Hurricane. Um, essentially, what AXA is doing, uh, what AXA is doing here uh, was to include HWIND solu analytics solution that is provided by RMS to trigger specific metrics for their parametric insurance policies related, uh, related to, as I said before, hurricanes. Other really interesting companies providing solutions in the risk modeling space are, for example, Climatex, a really interesting British startup providing risk reports and loss quantifications on properties and assets under different climate scenarios. Uh, we have seen also Understory, with, which uh, generates localized weather data through their patent pending sensors. And through those sensors, they are able to detect rain, hail, winds, and other weather events. Last but not least, don't want to sound uh, repetitive. Uh, I don't want to, so I don't want, I don't want to spoil anything. But we are talking about Rare Twenty. Uh, I will let uh, Danny uh, introduce the startup himself uh, later. But just to provide some few details, they are operating in the flood uh, risk assessment and mitigation space. They combined, they basically combined computational fluid dynamics and AI to better understand flood risk at a specific building level. And through their AI model, they are able to deliver risk mitigation insights at scale. Moving forward to, to, to geospatial analytics, a really interesting partnership that we have observed in the market is the one between Guide One and BetterView. Essentially, Guide One insurance company selected BetterView's solution to increase underwriting efficiency and strengthen uh, risk management processes, while BetterView, on their side, through a mix of uh, third-party data, just spatial intelligence, and proprietary machine learning tools, they were they were able to provide that that solution to to Guide One. Other really interesting startups here that we could talk about are, for example, Arturo, which provides advanced data analytics solutions powered by just spatial data, Zesty AI which was mentioned before, an online platform that provides AI-based technology that delivers that deliver, uh, insights at a specific property level, using, um, and they do that uh, by using just spatial imagery. And another uh, really, really cool startup that was mentioned before throughout the deals, that is iSight, which provides microsatellite-based micro, micro uh, imagery and data monitoring solutions. Awesome. Um, sorry for the cliffhangers, but we we do need something to keep everyone uh, <laughs> awesome. So um, not only, of course, like not only does weather data analysis improve the ability to better prevent risk, right? But it also can improve the user experience by enabling better um, or en enabling you to better prepare for the potential impact of an event. So therefore, um, weather intelligence can help users reduce property impact of an event, all in all, either eliminating uh, the need of claims or reducing costs. Um, in addition to accurate uh, alerts and predictions are also a great tool to detect who to offer parametric insurance to based on who is likely to be affected by a specific risk, improving also top line revenue, for example, and companies like Tomorrow that IO um, are bidding for these capabilities. They have actually secured a, a 19.3 million contract with the US Air Force to deploy their own fleet of satellites to provide more granular and accurate analysis. This is, or this contract, Tomorrow.io will offer satellite as a service, as well as allowing them to feed that data into their own models. Companies that are, are operating in this space, for example, tomorrow that IO, which we have already talked about, they have already raised a lot of capital. So about 185 million 
um, in just less than, than 10 years. Other companies like Jupiter, for example, um, have raised 88 million and has a very good product. Like tomorrow, um, they allow access to a large database um, that can be integrated into an insurer's ecosystem. They already have use cases with other insurers, so it's um, a good consideration. And finally, future proof, um, able to provide detailed granularity of weather risk exposure within the portfolio. This is a younger technology solution operating as an MGA, but has already proven to be quite successful. And I know blockchain may be a bit of a buzzword, but if you have uh, followed some of the content that we have been putting together, you know that we need to be talking about blockchain within this context, uh, context specifically. And the reason for that is that it has, or it really has the potential to play an interesting role in this space. An example of, um, or an example of that can actually be the creation of new insurance models, as we have seen with companies such as Nexus Mutual or Aetherisk with peer-to-peer -peer capabilities. As mentioned before, parametric is just insurance based on data and conditional factors. So blockchain has the unique capabilities of substituting API calls and data access for smart contracts and oracles. Now, what it is required for this technology is to become more widely implemented and reduces its costs. We have actually seen this concept implemented when Lemonade created the Crypto Climate Coalition alongside with Avalanche, Etherisk, um, Chainlink, Pula, Hanover Ring, and Tomorrow.io. And this org organization was helping uninsured population in Africa to get crop insurance in a parametric manner. And again, a big part or like this role or like the role for this to really take place is data availability. And when it comes to blockchain, this is given or accessed through the aforementioned oracles. These are software solutions that bridge the gap between real world data and blockchain. Here, leaders in the space are companies such as Blockshare, um, Chainlink and Supra oracles, as you can see on the screens. Cool, so we are reaching uh, the end of the presentation and we wanted to wrap things up by talking about the potential of claim automation, uh, thanks to parametric insurance. And of course, parametric insurance can easily be perceived as a white or black solution where results are binary, either everything or nothing. And that can be true actually, but other interesting um, adjustment models can also be implemented that would, would help out with customer satisfaction whilst lessening the burden of adjusters. For example, we could use a two-phase model where losses are set to a maximum, and then the remainder can be done through indemnification. Similarly, multi-tranche models allow for policies to have different levels of payouts based on event degree. Or lastly, adjuster triggered where uh, the policy would parametrically be triggered by an adjuster based on the threshold and um, if it has been met or not. This can actually be done with an on-site detector, for example, that um, only the adjuster has access to, to minimize potential fraud. Of course, all this comes in hand uh, with the development of AI and computer vision and how it's been used. For example, um, MSNAD used Tractable in 2021 uh, in Japan after the typhoon season to quickly assess its property portfolio damage by allowing clients to use their smartphone cameras and assess the damage that was actually done. Um, the claims for, for this event were actually handled in just one single day. And other companies in this sector, we already talked about uh, Tractable, but companies like, for example, K Crispy or Kespri, sorry, allow the use of drones for this um, data imagery collection. So you can easily um, scan and, and gather the data for larger areas or companies like Planar, um, they similarly to Tractable, they collect image, um, but in this case for, for home interiors. And in case of using a hybrid parametric model, being able to quickly segment claims allows the parametric insurance process to become really much more efficient. And once again, 
the implementation of artificial intelligence models is vital uh, or is of vital importance uh, for this. And these models allow the integration at all steps, achieving full integration to minimize the time required to perform specific tasks. That automation also helps with the minimization of human error, improving accuracy and efficiency. We have observed, for example, with the partnership of two startup companies like Socra and Omnias, um, these two companies allow through the integration or through their integration to automate any step in the life of the policy, improving user experience. Here, Socotra provides the operational system while Omnias adds the ability to automate low complexity and high volume uh, claim processes. Something similar can be achieved with the continuous dictation to keep up or automating the insurance process. And companies like Omnias, uh, Cigna or Five Cigna and 360 Global Net can be a help of that. And now I'll, I'll give the word back to Francesco to, to quickly wrap us up. Cool, just to wrap up, uh, it is another, another relevant solution that we wanted to talk, about, to talk about is the use of IoT for better accuracy. Uh, IoT technologies uh, actually enable, for example, event detection and claim response in real time when it comes to parametric insurance. An interesting use case that we have seen in the market is the use case of IoT by Aeon. Aeon has a long-term partnership with the Swiss technology provider Celsius Pro. Uh, specifically, what Aeon did is that they used uh, the services and technologies uh, provided by Celsius Pro for the design and triggering of index-based hurricane insurance. As we, as we have seen with the, with the partnership between Aeon and Celsius Pro, the use of IoT can be useful to deploy a parametric insurance product as IoT helps with data, with data collection and sharing, which in the end enhance the data, the data infrastructure that can be used for, for example, to trigger claims. Other, other really interesting startups that are providing similar solutions are, for example, Intelligent AI, British startup. Uh, they use uh, different data sources to provide AI-powered risk uh, reports on properties, and, uh, on, on properties, sorry. And Celsius Pro already mentioned, and another really interesting startup that, we, that, we, that will be here with us. Don't want to spoil, again, don't want to spoil so much. Uh, but we have Plotbase also, really interesting startup, as I said. Uh, they provide AI powered an AI powered platform for uh, flood databases, and thanks thanks to their solution, they are able to provide an end to end data solution for uh, flood parametric insurance. And with this being said, uh, yeah, we'd like to end our presentation and dive into the second part of the webinar, where we will see some really interesting startups discussing their solutions. Uh, we hope that you'll find it insightful, and obviously, if you'd like to further discuss the topics we we have seen. Just feel free to reach out on LinkedIn or by email. Both me and Andres, we'd love to keep chatting about, about these topics. Thank you. Moving on, we are going to do starter presentations from Raincoat, Floodbase, and Reor20. Uh, just as a brief overview here, starters will have about six minutes to pitch, and then there will be three minutes of Q&A. So if you have questions, please, please do ask them. Uh, we would highly encourage any sort of engagement here. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's move forward. First up, we have Rainco. Rainco is democratizing access to financial resilience from natural disasters. That looks great. And Jonathan, I believe you're- yeah, There you go. Yeah. I'm all right. yeah. <laughs> hey everyone, it's a pleasure to meet you all. Um, I guess I'll jump right into it. Uh, my name is Jonathan. I'm co-founder and CEO of Rainco. Um, my background is actually software, so a question I get quite a bit is what got me into this crazy world of climate and insurance. And in my specific case, it was actually Hurricane Maria in 2017. Um, I had actually just moved back down to Puerto Rico to take care of my mother, who was really health delicate at the time. And obviously, my biggest concern after the hurricane was just whether or not she was okay. It took me three days to get to her house um, after the hurricane. Um, and this was my mom when I finally was able to make contact. And thankfully, the house was still standing, but there was a lot of damage around it. So like the ramp that she would use for her wheelchair had been blown away. And I knew that it would take a while for the infrastructure to come back online. So I asked her if she had um, an insurance policy. She said she did. I went through the insurance policy. It was like a 50 page monster. I filed a claim and then we waited. We ended up waiting uh, basically a whole year to get a claims adjuster to show up to the house. So that was a year that I couldn't really repair the ramp. And then after that, 
uh, we waited six more months to get the claim processed. And at the end, it, it was ultimately denied. And as you can imagine, it wasn't a very positive experience. And unfortunately, this wasn't unique to me. A lot of people in Puerto Rico went through a very similar experience. So four years after the hurricane, there were still 1.6 billion in unpaid insurance claims. And five years after the hurricane, there's still talk about federal aid. So across the board, whether it was private or public, there were a lot of systematic failures that made recovery very difficult. And what we found out was that this was kind of universally true. It didn't matter if it was wildfires or typhoons in Japan or flooding in Germany. You would, you would kind of see very similar stories repeat over and over again. And we wanted to participate and be part of the solution in some form or way. Um, so we started researching the space. And as engineers, we were very interested in the concept of parametric insurance, the idea that you could break down an insurance policy into parameters that are measurable and that you can activate on that was something that was really fascinating to us as engineers. But the thing that was really curious was that we had never seen an insurance product at a consumer level that was parametric. Um, and that was the thing that really didn't make a lot of sense for us because we, we thought, well, two decades of corporate parametrics and government parametrics, why aren't I seeing products like these integrated everywhere, right? As part of other covers or standalone or integrated into banks. So we started meeting with the insurance industry and there were a couple of things that kept coming back at us when it comes to why the channels weren't building these products. And those were one, there was always this sense that building the product was very difficult. And when they said difficult, they meant the structuring, the packaging, developing the models to make sure that they work at scale. When I mean model, I really mean like the policy design and exactly how it functions and, and why it works that way. The second issue was the integrations of data. So whether or not you were using public data set or you were using a, a third-party data provider of any kind, usually this required some sort of non-trivial infrastructure that was really complicated to set up in, in like a short period of time. And then the last component that was very difficult was the core kind of policy management systems are built on legacy software and this process that is very claims-based. So this idea that you can have an event, you know, send text messages to everyone affected and then execute payments the very next day was something that is quite difficult to retrofit kind of a, a core policy management engine. So that when we saw these problems, it kind of clicked for us that we could serve a little bit as the abstraction layer for this. Where on the left, you have all the complexities related to these type of products from the science to the data, to the engineering, compliance, dealing with reinsurance, dealing with regulation. And on the other end, you have what the partner actually wants, which is a product that they can embed and, and distribute. And that's fundamentally what we do. We develop highly scalable and embedded climate insurance products. So these are B2B2C, so they're white labeled. And then we provide the infrastructure that allows the company to operate this. We've developed a whole platform that allows us to automate the full life cycle of one of these insurance policies, um, completely end to end, all the way from issuance to, to claims activation. And it's a very modular architecture that allows us to plug into just about any kind of distribution channel. So it's very powerful in that sense. And we can help leverage whatever is already in place in that channel or with that partner. And speaking of partners, we work with two major types of partners that fall into kind of big buckets. One are commercial partners, right? Entities that are looking for new products that they can either start to sell or attach or distribute um, for commercial reasons. But we also work with a lot of entities that are looking for the protection, right? They're looking for protecting large groups of people at scale, either because it makes sense for them from a government perspective, for example, or it makes sense for them because they're in a very competitive market. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of really interesting deployments that we've worked on um, that kind of show the, the spectrum of what can be possible. On the government end, uh, we worked in Mexico with a consortium of insurance companies to help protect thousands of small scale uh, farmers. This is a great case study where you know, there was reinsurance capacity interest. There's an insurance company in the government that they're going to utilize, but then there are all these IT challenges. There's all this software requirement, all these integrations. And then we were able to really get in there and help support both on the product, but also on providing the operating platform. On the commercial front in Colombia, we were able to deploy a really interesting credit tied parametric insurance product. Uh, this was done in collaboration with Cardiff and Banco Agrario. And we were able to also include a really unique cover that was developed by Floodbase for Flood, which I'll let Bessie talk a little bit more about that. But it's one of those deployments that is really unique, really interesting, and there's a lot of potential to scale things like that in, in other markets. And then finally, in my native Puerto Rico, um, after we deployed the first kind of microinsurance in, under the NAIC, which was a hurricane microinsurance product, um, there was a lot of interest in embedding that type of product into different channels. And one of the really interesting ones was with Hyundai, 
where they realize that customers are constantly thinking about hurricanes top of mind, right? If you live in Puerto Rico and that you can leverage that as a way to push sales. So it was a really interesting deployment. Um, this deployment actually paid out last year within 24 hours of Hurricane Fiona. So it was really interesting to kind of see it end to end. And for us, it was full circle from where we started. So fundamentally, you know, we believe the parametric transformation of insurance is inevitable. And we think it's going to enable a lot of solutions to a lot of the biggest problems in this space, but there's going to be a lot of infrastructure needed. Um, and then we see ourselves as building that necessary support. And we've put together a really great team that includes both the technical expertise, so all the co-founders are technical, but also really great insurance expertise as well and regulatory experience. And that would be all. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Jonathan. One question I had around Raincoat, I think there's often a concern um, about there being an educational barrier around parametric insurance. And I was curious across your deployments, what your experience has been with that. Yeah, no, great question. So for us, the educational aspect is interesting. Uh, I actually heard in a panel recently, and I and I really agree um, with it, that it, it looks like educational, but oftentimes it's a basis risk problem or a packaging problem related to how the product is packaged and how it's being sold directly to, to consumers. Um, so what we have found is that it's less education and more better product development, right? Products that make sense within the context that the consumer is buying it, products that make sense within the context of the peril that's being covered. And if you do work really hard at doing that, right, at improving the underlying product and in improving the underlying aspects of how it activates and why and what is it supposed to be covered and what's the correlation with loss, the educational component drops significantly because ultimately, right, what consumers want is insurance that works and pays quickly, right? And if you can deliver that value, whether it's through a traditional product or a parametric one, um, they'll be happy, right? And, and our experience has been that very complex parametrics can be successfully sold to regular people as long as the performance of that product is well calibrated and, and you know, you, you know that it's going to work the way that it's supposed to. Gotcha. Thank you very much. I have just been made aware. Oh, there, there, yeah. it's the poll now. Okay, fantastic. Um, and I think, okay, no more time for questions. Jonathan, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next up, and if we could go to the next slide. Next up, we have Floodbase, and Floodbase is a satellite and AI platform to track floods in near real time anywhere on Earth to ensure risk and save lives. I'll pass it off. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for having me. And it's a particular delight to go after one of my uh, favorite partners in Raincoat and Jonathan. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Floodbase. We're an end-to-end -end data solution, finally enabling parametric flood insurance, which can, by many estimates, triple the amount of flood risk that's able to be covered. Flooding is the most common and costly peril, and yet the protection gap for this peril is massive, which leads to a massive amount of lack of financial protection for some of the examples like what Jonathan just talked about. Yet it's also a huge untapped opportunity for the market. We specialize in working with large corporate, public sector, and portfolio deals in order to enable previously impossible to cover assets and other types of risk. What you see here is just a small example of deals and flood risk that our head of commercial was unable to do when he was the head of parametric for North America for Marsh. Let's just take the example in the middle here. This is one of the largest health systems in America that has a major asset based in Houston, Texas. This would not have gotten a payout during Hurricane Harvey because Hurricane Parametric only includes a wind cover and Harvey was largely a flood event. These and many more were unable to be done because a reliable source of data for both underwriting and triggering parametric flood insurance just doesn't exist, leaving all of this on the table. And this is what we have solved. 
parametric flood insurance is now possible with the technology that you see on the right here. What FloodBase does is use all direct observations, not a simulation or a model, to understand flooding as it's happening in near real time, every hour across the entire United States and twice daily across the entire world. What you're looking at on the right here is the state of California during major flooding over a, about a two month period for just the entire area. You're looking at an hour by hour reading of the entire flood. It's aggregated by day. We began mapping this in the middle of the flood with our partners in FEMA who were responding. And we're actually continuing to map this to this day. As many of you may know, there's some major snow melt flooding happening in Lake Tulare. So we're working with our partners at FEMA to help respond to that. And this is the insurance directorate portion of it. But we're also able to run the exact same algorithm back in time for decades in order to map every flood event that's happened in these locations how bad they were, lots of different aspects of those floods, analytics like depth, and down to a very fine resolution. It's the same data for the historical and the near real time data, that means the trigger and the underwriting data is the same. Now it took us about 10 years to develop this. And about two years ago, this was on the cover of Nature. And today we're really proud to that this data is used by uh, folks in government from FEMA to the United Nations, uh, about 20 different broker and carrier partners and major tech companies. But how does this technology, this data layer become an insurance policy? So we're just gonna take this example here in a cat in a circle type structure that many may be familiar with. So that you see is the uh, little plus sign uh, outside Houston there is one of our clients. We drop that point and then we draw a radius around. It can be as big or as small as the customer wants for their need and their asset. We then draw a customized index based again on real observations of floods for this particular area. This enables us to then determine the thresholds of when they would have wanted to pay out. That's how we design the policy. Then we set and incept the policy and monitor every single hour at that location and compare whether or not the current flooding or not has reached a, one of the trigger thresholds that we set. These are just a couple of examples of folks who are using this already. So this is a global retailer uh, that is coming to set up shop in a couple of flood prone cities across the US one of them being uh, Houston and the Houston area. So while they care about property insurance, the major risk they're concerned about is business interruption when no one goes shopping at their retail sites. We can cover this while traditional insurance cannot because we can see flooding happening around the region. So we've set this up in about a dozen locations uh, and have begun monitoring. And I'm particularly excited to just share this other example uh, because Jonathan referenced this as well. We're really proud to be working with Raincoat and other partners here to enable uh, flood protection for a huge number of farmers across uh, a big Latin American country. We're monitoring the entire country every day, determining if a payout is deserved, if a major flood event is happening, and then providing a sliding scale of payout via Jonathan and Rain Code, if an event is detected. Again, these are just two different types of examples of the types of flood risk that it's possible to be covered today. And we're thrilled that Flood Parametric is finally able to provide this flood protection and excited to learn, work with more to offer more of these policies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bessie. Okay, and now the the poll to connect with Bessie should be popping up uh, maybe a bit sooner this time. But in the meantime, I had a quick question for you. The there it is. The um, government implementations it looked like you had quite a few impressive government implementations. I was curious um, what those typically look like for you guys, those partnerships. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so while a major focus of us is parametric insurance for governments and corporates. 
we have historically also worked directly with national governments, primarily national disaster management agencies, to support them with uh, search and rescue zoning. We've worked in 32 countries around the world, uh, including FEMA and the US, uh, but many in order to support uh, them um, relocating communities. Uh, they've provided uh, millions of dollars in relief through the system by detecting who's at risk when very quickly. What I think is really exciting is when this type of government disaster management and response can be paired with a financing mechanism as we've done with a couple of our partners, either because we started with a partnership through the government to give them the data they need to understand what they actually need the financing for. And then, or sometimes it's working with the insurance side and then giving perhaps a premium reduction to the government for the insurance policy that they're taking out. So happy to provide uh, examples of either one of those. No, that's great. Thank you. And there is one question here from Brendan McGowan. And the question is, do you have any insight into loss ratios for your customers? Uh, yes. Um, happy to follow up on that. But in addition to providing uh, the data, we uh, basically have two offerings. One, happy to just hand over the data and have you do all of the work or support you if you'd like to do it. We also, with some of our partners, do uh, a lot of the structuring uh, for them, so are happy to provide uh, suggested pricing, uh, thresholds, and some prefer to just take that as it is or, or even have us work with their brokers or their risk holders to help them understand it and close the policy. That sounds great. Bessie, thank you very much. That's about all the time that we have, but really appreciate you being here. Okay. And next up, we have Reor20. Reor20 is a deep tech company that developed a new technological paradigm that breaks the barriers of the known science. I'll be introducing Danny here. My name is Danny, and I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Reor20. Uh, the, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, flood catastrophe modeling. Uh, basis risk, a major headache. Uh, we we are well aware that uh, it is uh, many times uh, parametric uh, contracts are uh, paying people without anything happening on the ground or the other way around. There are three major issues. Uh, that we have identified uh, that uh, are starting from flood understanding methods that lead to large basis risk. So the current state of art uh, in modeling uh, is uh, calculating how floods are developing on bare earth. In other words, they are removing the buildings from the, uh, from the earth, they run simulations, and then they are overlaying the buildings. So that is uh, what you're seeing on the screen is a, is a typical uh, profile of uh, flooding, which actually occurs also in the building uh, because the calculation doesn't know about the building. So uh, we correct for that uh, by accounting for the buildings and uh, the result is really uh, spectacular. So. Uh, we think it matters because without the buildings, the calculation in this case would uh, um, result to a depth of water of about 25 centimeters, while with the buildings, it's about two meters. Imagine that you have a trigger uh, that is attached to this number. Further than that, none of the current uh, applications are taking account, uh, methodologies are taking account how much time are you underwater. So uh, the, the, the dynamic part, of, uh, of the calculation is uh, usually omitted. So it is not the same thing that uh, to, to be under uh, a meter for 10 minutes or for two hours. Thirdly, and most importantly, uh, same depth means same risk. Um, and uh, what you're seeing uh, on the screen is like two commercial properties uh, having the same exposure to maximum depth so according to current understanding would be the same risk, but uh, the first property is in an area where the water is accumulated around the, the building very slowly, while uh, the property number two is in the middle of a waterway. Um, what happened actually is this. So what you're seeing on the left-hand side is our calculation, on the right-hand side, what actually happened. 
And as you can see, the, the water, uh, which by the way, uh, on, that, on that side of the building, uh, according to the current state of art, uh, there would be no water, uh, is uh, destroying the building uh, down to the ground. So we're talking about the total loss while in the first property that I saw you before, uh, they had a business interruption, but they had to uh, wait to dry out more or less, and they could continue their operations. So uh, Reo is providing a high fidelity risk understanding, which can be used. And actually we have a client that is using it for this reason to uh, mitigate even the risk. So actually eventually to lower the risk of property. Um, and uh, the information that we're providing is not uh, down to property level, but actually to down to uh, uh, property wall level. And we are giving you both the dynamic, but also the static forces, uh, also the time underwater. And um, if you are wondering why we are able to do that, and that is not uh, in the market, is that because the, these these kind of calculations are extremely expensive. They take a lot of time, and what we had to develop is a very deep tech, a groundbreaking technology uh, that soon will allow us to provide such information at scale. Uh, in short, we are teaching physics to an AI algorithm, and we managed to accelerate such kind of uh, modeling by a hundred thousand times. Uh, if you but this is a, a very, very different discussion. Uh, if you want to know more, we will be very, very happy to, to have a, a, an individual uh, discussion. So back to the parametric, uh, uh, essentially Rare 20 helps you to correlate the right trigger level to the true property risk and eventually to, to, to reduce the, the basis risk to, to the minimum level. So I would like to leave you with a, a thought, is parametric the only right solution? Because uh, of the speed of the calculation that we can do at that accuracy, we think that we can start uh, building on top of a parametric, parametric-like identity insurance, meaning that uh, what if you can triage your, your claims immediately and uh, you can automate most of your payments. Uh, and with this thought, I uh, will, Finish my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Danny. If you had any thoughts, any responses to that question, feel free to drop them in Q&A box. Um, could also chat with Danny in response to the poll here that's coming up. I was curious for you, um, if you could take me through maybe a typical POC, what that timing maybe cost looks like for you. So uh, on, in the parametric space, uh, we are we are young, young startup. So in the parametric space, we don't have a, a solution yet. Uh, on uh, the uh, uh, commercial risk, uh, we are uh, needing for areas that uh, we are not uh, having any experience uh, a couple of weeks for the moment. But as I told you, uh, we are building the, the technology based on AI, and that would be actually on demand in a, in the next year, year and a half. Okay, okay, fantastic. Um, Danny, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Okay, and with that, we are going to wrap up here. Before we do, want to let you all know about some upcoming events. If we can jump to the next. So coming up here on May 24th, it would be how to effectively leverage AI in an involving underwriting environment. And that will be in conjunction with Remark, head of their digital solutions. And then, of course, Summit is coming up here in early June. June 6th is when InsureTech will be presenting. FinTech and crypto also going on the same day. Um, but hope to see many of you in the audience in person there in the Silicon Valley uh, for, for Summit. Okay, thank you for tuning in. If you would, please fill out the pop-up survey that comes up after this. Um, otherwise, I hope everyone has a great week. Uh, again, my name is Sean, and uh, thank you for being here. All right, take care, everyone.